My name's Emily and uh, I'm from York um, and I run a charity called The Bus Stop, which I believe quite a few of you have heard about. And um, We have a double-decker bus and that helps uh, churches connect with young people. I think you heard from Rosie maybe a couple of weeks ago, um, who also works for the bus and is going to be working for the bus in Scarborough, which is super exciting. Um, I wonder what your secret life is like. I wonder what your secret life is like. That might sound like a really strange question. Also, it probably sounds a bit personal. And actually, it is. What is your secret life like? Because these verses that Mary uh, read out earlier are part of three, which teach us about the importance of our secret time. The importance of our time when we're alone, when we're with nobody else, when it's just us and God away from any observers, away from the outside world completely. And I wonder what your secret time looks like. Uh, this phrase about our time in secret comes up three times uh, in the same chapter. So Jesus is really like making a point. And so once it comes up about our giving to the poor, the second time it comes up about our prayer life, which we just heard, and once about fasting. And there's the same phrase, which is repeated three times. It says, then your father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. Um, so firstly, he talks about giving to the poor. It says, don't announce it with trumpets. Don't show everybody you're giving to the poor, giving to charity. Uh, give, let your giving be done in secret. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Then he talks about fasting. He says, don't look really sad and somber so everybody knows that you're fasting, so everybody knows you haven't had much to eat. Don't look really glum and make a big, a big like, do of it. Don't make it obvious, but only make it obvious to your father who is unseen and your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And then we just heard Jesus talks about our prayer life. And he says, don't just pray when everybody can see and hear you. Don't just use loads of words and pray out loud thinking that you'll be more likely to be heard. Instead, when you pray, go into your room, close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. So I wonder what your time that's just you and God looks like and what you would like it to look like. Um, I really like, there's another phrase in these uh, verses which is repeated twice and it's this, it says, your father who is unseen. So it says, pray to your father who is unseen. Now he repeats that twice and I think it's pretty obvious, right? Your father who's unseen. We know that we can't quite see God. So why does Jesus make a point of that? I think what he's really trying to point out, he's really trying to get to the point that the person who is unseen is who matters, not the seen. Pray to your father who is unseen. Stop trying to press the seen. I don't know about you, but I feel like I spend half my life trying to impress people and not actually trying to impress God. But we need to stop focusing on that because that's not what matters. It's your father who is unseen who matters. And our time in secret with him really, really matters. I think in church... It's really easy to get into this culture where um, our praying out loud in, other, in front of other people is really important and can feel quite pressurised. I don't know about you, maybe you've not experienced this, but I definitely have. Um, when I was brought up as a young person in youth church youth groups, there was a definite culture that if you were a young person who prayed out loud, you were like super Christian, like, and you'd look on with envy at the other kids in your youth group. There'd be like Joe in the corner who was like spilling out these amazing prayers. You'd be like, oh, Joe's so Christian. He's like, him and his relationship with God is so spot on. And I think the next level up after that was if they could raise a hand in worship at some point. You were like, whoa, whoa, they've really got it nailed. And, uh, but you know what? What I want my young people to care about is not how well or confidently they can pray out loud. It's what their personal time one-on-one -on -one with Jesus looks like. That's it. That's what matters. Okay? It's, it's what them and God are like together. It's having their rootedness in him and who he says they are. Now, don't get me wrong. I think there's nothing wrong with praying out loud at all. In fact, I'm really for it. I think it's a great way to encourage one another. I think praying out loud is a really good way to express yourself. 
but it has to come with honesty and integrity and not trying to impress anybody. I don't know about you, but sometimes I've spent more time thinking about what I'm going to pray than actually just praying. Okay, so thinking about the words that are going to come out, will they sound okay? Actually, what matters more is how we're trying to express ourselves to God. I thought it's really interesting what Mary said. So it says at the end of those verses, don't be like them for your father knows what you need before you ask him. So you could be like, oh, what's the point in praying? Because God totally knows what we need already. It's just said that. But prayer is about a relationship, isn't it? It's about expressing how we feel, expressing our needs, expressing what's going on in our lives with God. And the only point of that, if it's, if it's going to be honest and it's from the heart, um, I notice um, when I meet new Christians or people who've just come to faith recently or even who are just exploring faith, their prayers are so beautifully honest and beautifully simple. It doesn't have all this jargon, these like, I, we call it Christianese, I don't know if you've heard that, like these Christian words um, that maybe some of us don't even know what they mean, but it, it's not filled with that. It's just so honest and raw and real and is just speaking what they want to say to God. And there's something so beautiful like that. And I don't know, maybe you want to join me in decluttering our prayers, because that's what I'm having a go at at the moment. I'm trying to declutter my prayer life so that A, when I pray with God on my own, I want to get better at that, just like having more concentrated time, just me and Jesus. But also that when I pray out loud with other people, I just pray what is on my heart, what is on my mind and what I want to say to God honestly and openly. And, and if it's got millions of ums and buts and, and it doesn't sound amazing, I don't care if that's what I need to express to God. And that's what I'm trying to do at the moment. Um, you probably know or you can probably tell. I'm quite, um, I'm quite an active person. I think I show this the way I speak. I use lots of gestures. I'm quite an active person. I like to do lots of things. And if you're like me, it's really easy to do lots of things in church, to do lots of activities, to go to lots of prayer meetings, to meet with lots of people. And the danger of being that type of person is that that one-on-one -on -one time with God can get kind of squished and squished and squished. And it's easy to be like, oh, but I pray with other people. Or I pray for me, I pray on the bus with young people. Oh, but yeah, I'm, I'm giving in lots of different ways. But what I'm always again and again challenged by, and it's something I'm still learning and probably will always be learning, is that my core has to be who I am when I'm not surrounded by other people and it's just me and God. That has to be at the core of who I am. Um, a very wise woman said to me, she was asking me about my prayer life, and she said, uh, do you know, you can go through life and not have that one-on-one -on -one time with Jesus that often. You can go and just do kind of one, like little prayers throughout your day. But do you know what? You're really, really missing out. Do you know, you're really missing out on something absolutely so special, so valuable. If you don't have that, yeah, you can. You can go through life and just say little prayers. And I don't know, but if you don't have that time with God, ideally every day, coming to him every day, just being in silence with him, oh, you're really missing out on something. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I went on a week away with um, people who run kind of charities similar to mine that work with churches. And there's one lady there who runs a charity called Renew Wellbeing, and it's excellent. Um, and it's basically the idea of having spaces in churches where it's okay not to be okay. So basically, she runs up cafes, helps churches get cafes going, specifically for people with mental health problems or people who are just not feeling great in life, that they can come and they can just be and have a cup of tea, talk to somebody if they want to, and there's like prayer going on if they want to join in. And it's very, very simple. And her idea of this came out of her own experience. She went through a bit of a breakdown a few years ago. She'd been totally, she'd been like running around like a bee, busy bee all her life. And uh, just one day, just, uh, she just said it just hit her. And she went through this very, very serious bout of depression. And she said the thing that kept her rooted in her relationship with Jesus and the thing that kind of brought her out of it was that every day she'd get her mug of tea or coffee in the morning and she'd sit with it. And from the moment that she started to drink it, her first sip to her very last, that was time between her and God in silence every day. She did it every morning. It's just very simple. Just that time between her first sip and when she finished her coffee was just her time with her and Jesus. And sometimes she'd read a psalm at that time. Now, that's not rocket science, is it? It's very, very simple. 
But honestly, just time in silence with God, how much of a difference that can make to our lives. I think, I think this time that we can have with God on our own, it's probably our greatest weapon. Do you know, like the things that life throws at us, the things that the enemy throws at us, actually, if we have that rootedness in Jesus and in meeting with him every day, that is honestly our greatest re- weapon as Christians, I think, is prayer and prayer with God, an honest and real prayer with God. Just before um, these verses that Mary read about prayer, so this is all part of the Sermon on the Mount, this big, long sermon of Jesus where he talks about all sorts of challenging things. And right at the start of that is something called the Beatitudes. Um, and it has a big list. You've probably heard it before. It says, blessed are the, blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed are the, who, those who mourn. And I was reading through those. And the one that really spoke out to me was, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. It was really interesting to read those. There's nothing about blessed are those with, who can pray and praise out loud to God. Blessed are those with the really beautiful long prayers. Blessed are those with the amazing words and the really good language. No, none of that in there. But blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. That's what God cares about, isn't it? It's our hearts. That's what he cares about, not, not what our words sound like. The fact that Moses was a stutterer, I think, probably says that, do you know? It's not our words that matter. It's our hearts and who we are in that alone time with him. Let's be a people whose personal prayer life is our absolute root and foundation and a people who are known for honesty and simplicity in our words to God. I just think that would be amazing. I'm so refreshing. I've um, brought a few uh, non-Christians to various events. So I've had friends who are searching. I've met people who are searching. And um, they've sometimes found um, the prayer time quite intimidating. I don't say this to discourage us, but to encourage us to be more honest and simple with our prayers. Because actually, when you're surrounded, and this happens with young people, I try and say the simplest prayers when I'm with young people, because I don't want them to think that they have to come out with this spiel, this long spiel that they've got to rehearse. I want them to be able to say, if they used to say five years, thank you God for, God help me with, amen. That's beautiful, and that's, that's a beautifully honest prayer. And I think there's something about stripping back um, the, the things that, the way that we've got used to praying and just praying honestly and simply, and that's what I want to be better at doing, have a go at doing. Um, I'm going to read out to you uh, the message translation of those verses. It's um, kind of a modern interpretation of the Bible. Um, I'm just going to, I'm going to read them out twice because I just think they're really profound and they kind of speak a lot about what I've just been talking about. And when you come before God... Don't turn that into theatrical production either. All these people making a regular show out of their prayers, hoping for stardom. Do you think God sits in a box seat? Here's what I want you to do. Find a quiet, secluded place so you won't be tempted to role play before God. Just be there as simply and honestly as you can manage. The focus will then shift from you to God, and you'll begin to sense his grace. I'll read that last bit again. Here's what I want you to do. Find a quiet, secluded place so you won't be tempted to role play before God. Just be there as simply and honestly as you can manage. The focus will then shift from you to God, and you will begin to sense his grace. So I'd, I'd love you to ponder for the rest of the service and, and be listening to God, I guess, about what he wants your time, just you and him, to look like. Um, maybe you're like me, where I can sometimes feel like I've got that time and then life can kind of squish it out. And maybe you don't have that time at the moment. And maybe it's about putting that time in. Maybe it's about changing up what that time looks like. Maybe it's kind of just been the same and, and it's about coming to God really honestly and real again. Um, Or maybe it's completely starting from scratch. Maybe it's something you've never actually done and putting that time in. Um, But I just want to encourage you to to listen to God, to chat to God about what your secret life with him could look like. Uh, I'm just going to pray. Jesus, we thank you that it's our hearts which matter to us. 
uh, matter to you, sorry. <laughs> not our outward expression, not the way that we are in front of other people, but you just care about who we are when we're alone with you. You care about our hearts. God, we thank you that we can be fully honest with you. And I pray that you would help us to be a people that can be so honest and raw and real with you, both when we're on our own, but also when we're with other people. Help our prayers uh, to be true to who we are. God, I pray that you'd help us to declutter our prayers when, when, they, when they say lots of things that aren't needed, God. Help us to be simple and honest when we communicate with you, particularly when we're with others, God. God, I pray that you'd speak to each one of us here about what our time just with you, just us and you, could look like. Maybe prompting us about where that time could be, what place, what location, what we can do during that time that would make it just us and you time, God. Amen.